Now, unrelated to insulin resistance is stress. Now, stress is a big term. It's a kind of blanket term that within pop culture has taken on a lot of dimensions that uh, that are sometimes used inappropriately and other times uh, precisely. So with stress, this is – when I say stress, I really mean the stress hormones. I can't help but think about stress as a hormone response or an endocrine in, uh, situation. And specifically, there are two primary stress hormones in the body, cortisol and epinephrine, also known as adrenaline. I'll call it epinephrine. That's the more technical term that's used. So cortisol and epinephrine. These hormones are actually totally unre uh, unrelated. They are produced in different cell types. They are moved through the – they're produced very differently. They're very different types of hormones. They move through the blood in different ways. They actually act on different cells throughout the body in different ways and have different effects throughout the body. The one thing they have in common is that they both want to increase blood glucose. And so if you have these stress hormones that are trying to push glucose up, there's another hormone that now has to work even harder to bring the glucose down. And of course, that's insulin. And so it's no surprise then that if these stress hormones are continually pushing up the glucose, the body's becoming more insulin resistant. Now, what are some of the causes of stress? Uh, this can be something as benign as sleep deprivation and insomnia. One bad night of sleep will significantly increase cortisol the next day, which causes insulin resistance that next day. Now, thankfully, one good night of sleep wipes that all out. But sleep deprivation is a simple and very common cause of stress on the body, which has a metabolic consequence. Tragic when you couple it with the poor sleep, which is excessive caffeine consumption. That if someone's taking in too much caffeine, perhaps to try to make up for their or to feel better with the lack of sleep, then that increases the other stress hormone, the epinephrine. And when epinephrine goes up now, it's trying to push up glucose, which then makes insulin work harder. And so it's easy to see how a person can fall into this vicious cycle of sleeping poorly, taking caffeine to make up for it, which just continues to drive this insulin resistance. And again, this is something that happens in humans. You give humans a load of, of cortisol or, or cortisol-like molecule, give them epinephrine, and then try to treat them with insulin, they'll need much more insulin to bring their glucose down to what would have been just a, norm, a modest amount of insulin prior to the introduction of the stress hormones. Same with animals and same with cells. Having done those experiments myself, you treat the cells with those molecules and they become insulin resistant. Now, the third and final of the primary causes, I leave in the final pole position, if you will, um, in order to uh, just really emphasize it because it's the one that I believe is over time, chronically, the most relevant of all of them, and that is chronically elevated insulin. Now, let me just introduce you know, a brief tangent where some people will say or they'll want to think that I'm saying any insulin spike is bad and should be avoided at all costs. That's not what I'm saying. But I want someone to appreciate the impact of multiple insulin spikes that are stacked together. Now, to, to elaborate on that, if someone eats a load of carbohydrate because protein and fat are generally going to have no uh, elicit no insulin response, if someone eats pure carbohydrate, insulin will come up, and the insulin will take usually about two hours to come back down in an insulin-sensitive person, maybe you know between two and three hours until the insulin comes back down to normal. Now, remember, the reason I'm talking about this is because too much insulin causes insulin resistance. You can do this in humans. You can do this in rodents and in cells. And I've done it in – not in humans, but others have. Give humans an infusion of insulin and then give them a few hours, and the insulin starts working worse and worse and worse. So it's increasingly resistant. The body is to it. So you have the person who gets an insulin response to a carbohydrate load. Unfortunately – the average person not only eats a very starchy, sugary breakfast, but they do the same thing with a mid-morning snack. And so right around the time insulin's about to come back down to its fasted levels, we have a culture of incessant snacking and eating. They spike it right back up. Then they spike it right back up, and they do it again. They do it for lunch. They do it for an afternoon snack. They do it for 
um, dinner. They do it for their evening snack. So every waking moment is spent in a state of elevated insulin. Elevated insulin causes insulin resistance. 